Okay. <clears throat> In this example, we're going to be looking at um, the CSS, um, what's known as the box model, um, and how things are positioned. Um, within your session, you will also produce a graphic representation of this. Um, and certainly we'll be working with um, lots of web pages that use this. Okay, so the box model um, refers to um, elements in CSS that are known as box level or, or block level elements. There's two real main types um, of interest and they are block level and inline. Now block level elements are given their own new line when they're used. Um, so they're spaced out from things. Um, so some examples would be um, headings, um, div tags, um, and the box model itself refers to how the elements are one positioned and to how their sizes are calculated um, because sometimes this can be quite surprising as to why there are spaces appearing between um, certain elements and it's usually to do with um, a conflict between using an element that's in line in a way that should be block. Okay, so it can get a bit complex, but the simple side of it is um, it's concerned with properties that are box level um, and the principles can be applied throughout. So there's three properties of concern um, a box level model has, um, sorry, a, a box level element has. Um, we're interested in the padding, the border and the margin. So if we think of um, every element as a rectangle, the way that they are displayed in the page um, and spaced out is defined by a margin, which is usually by default always there. So a box, uh, a box level um, element, block level element will have a margin already. It spaces it between other elements. Um, and we can also set borders, um, which are visual elements. Um, so we could put a red line around a box or we could put a black line around a box or we can even use images to create uh, more creative borders. And then padding, padding is the space in used within the box um, to give the illusion that text and elements within that block level elements um, are spaced from the edges. Okay. So the way that would look um, is as follows. In, in, in the diagram, we will see um, what is known as the element. This could be a div element. This could be a heading. This could be an article or a section. Um, and the element itself can contain other elements. Um, so it could contain images. It could contain text. It could also contain other divs, other articles, other sections. Um, but the element we're looking at has um, First off, padding. So if this element was um, 100 pixels wide to start off with, um, which would make it quite small, and we then decided to put some padding onto it to allow for the text um, some breathing room, I suppose, um, at the sides. So if it was 100 pixels wide and then we put five pixel padding on, what it would do is it create a space of five pixels the whole way around the element. And so therefore the element would itself become 110 pixels wide. And so when we're positioning things, we have to take into account for the fact that the size of the element changes based on not only the element size set, but also the additional values of padding, border and margin. So if we then added onto that 110 pixel element and padding, a two pixel border, well, that would then add two pixels either side. So in the width, we would then have an additional four pixels. So that'd be 114 pixels. And then, for example, if the margin is set um, to default to five pixels, well, then that's another five pixels either side. So we've then got 10 pixels of margin in the width. We've got four pixels of border and the additional um, 10 pixels of padding. So that leaves us with um, 124 pixels required for a hundred 
pixel element because of the additional values that are added. So the best way to see that um, is in an example. Um, so I'll just create a new document in Dreamweaver and let's put view up. So it's a basic page and in the body, I can then insert, I'll insert an article at the insertion point and I will give it an ID of content. Okay. And I'll work in design view. So I'll just click on this button here. So we've got the full design view to see what's going on. Um, there is some content in there. What I want to do is either to work in hand code or CSS designer is to add a new rule. So I'm going to define a style in the page. Um, I'm then going to add a selector which will point to content. In fact, if I select content and then create the selector, it will do it for me. And then in the properties, I'm going to give it first off a background color so that we can see what's going on. Um, use a hex value of 33CC00. Zero, zero. I'm not quite sure what color that is. And there we go, it comes up with a green color. I'm then going to add a width property to it. Um, this time I'll use 400 pixels, so it's a bit bigger in the screen. Um, I'll give it a height of 400 pixels, so it's square. And then I'm going to add, because there's some text in there, some padding. So we'll notice that currently the text goes pretty much to the edge. Um, on the left hand side and at the top specifically because the word content doesn't fit onto the top line therefore it's dropped down so padding and i'll put a five pixel padding all around and if you just watch carefully at the green box it then moves the text in um, but it's actually made the box bigger as well i can then add a border um, and this would usually contain values such as uh, medium solid and a color I'm actually going to give it a pixel value so I know exactly how big it's going to be. So I'm going to put two pixels, solid, black. And there goes a solid black border around the outside, which makes the box itself even bigger. If I then add a margin, now there already is a bit of a margin um, of 10 pixels. We will notice this at the top and the left um, because there's no other elements in the page to interact with. But then the spacing gets bigger to the left and to the top it would also get bigger to the bottom and to the side and so that is um, essentially how the position of an element is calculated if i was to quickly go into code and what i'm going to do is i'm going to change content um, into a class just for this example so that i can reuse it notice in the selectors actually changed that for me which is quite useful and then in the body, I've got an article called content, which I can just quickly copy and paste. So I'll put it on return a couple of times. And then we're just looking at the design view again. Just double check. What I need to do is notice that it's broken. And the reason it's broken it is because you can only have one unique identifier in a page. So if I change this to class in each one, instead of an ID, you'll be able to reuse it. And there we go, three boxes, and in the page you'll see the way they're positioned is dependent upon their width and the values given. Okay. So at that point we will um, end this video and in the next video we'll look at positioning.